The first thing to do, getting ready to work on the fuselage, was to cut out the templates for the formers for the fuselage. You have six of them, the other formers, and then this is the cockpit floor, and these are the forward and aft battery tray compartments. So I cut all that out. Anything after the wing, I want to use balsa. That would include these three formers right here and the balsa fuselage sides. But I think I will also make the 1 8 inch light ply doubler. I think I'll also make that balsa. So I did a little quick experiment, a little bit test. I know balsa is lighter than, lighter than light ply. So this is a 3mm piece of light ply. 3mm is about eighth of an inch. Here's a balsa piece, and this is 4mm. I think I needed a little more stiffness that comes with the 4mm balsa. So I cut both of them out and I weighed them. The light ply comes up to 10 grams. The balsa comes up to 5.5 grams, just a little bit more than half the weight. But you'll see that there is a cutout in the plans where you can make the light ply lighter, the cutout would probably make this, or make the light ply piece the same as the weight of the balsa. But since this former butts right up against the horizontal stab, I won't cut out the uh, lightning hole in the balsa. I think I'll stick with the balsa. I like it. Now, here comes the problem. This is the fuselage plan page here. And as you can see, the plan page includes formers as well. I'm not quite sure why there is a separate page of fuselage formers when they're all listed here, but that's the way it is. So I checked the one that I cut out. This is F former six. And when I put it on the plan, well, it ends up being about an eighth of an inch too tall. So, I checked the others, F5, same thing, F4, same thing, too tall. It's also too wide. So, I don't think any of the formers on the template page are any good. So, I also checked the light, uh, the one eighth inch light ply doubler, lined it up against the leading edge of the wing, this part seems good. This part's good. This is just a little bit long, maybe a sixteenth of an inch long. We come back here and see where the edge is supposed to be against the, the wing. According to the plan, this doubler should be right here, not way back here. So that's a good half an inch too long. Also, if you look at the end, the end pieces here, they're also a good half an inch too long. So I took a look at the balsa fuselage side and yeah, guess what? When you get back all the way back here at the tail, it's a good half an inch too long. Now whenever you build from plans, or at least whenever I've built from plans, you know, if you don't have templates like that, you just take what the fuselage profile gives you and you trace it out and you put it on a piece of wood and you cut it out. So this would be what you would use. So since these are too long, matter of fact, the entire template page is too long or too big. I don't think I'll be using that. Uh, it's a good thing I, I got an extra set of plans when I did. I'll just cut out the former's on the fuselage page. I think these formers actually are the right size. I'll find out for sure once I cut them out and marry them up. For the balsa side and for the doubler, I'll just trace out, actually I won't trace it, I'll just cut this part out of the plan. I'll have to make uh, two pieces because the doubler is actually superimposed on the fuselage side. So I'll do the fuselage side first, peel this off, 
cut out for the doubler and then make the doubler piece. Not a big deal. Sheeting on the fin is complete. I rounded over the leading edge, kept the top square and the back square. There is gonna be a little bit of a mismatch with the rudder. I'm not sure yet how I'm gonna take care of that. But these are complete for now. So then I cut out the formers that were here in part of the fuselage page. I cut these out and these are a much better fit. For example, this is F4. If you put the bottom up right against the bottom on the plan, it comes right where it's supposed to be on the fuselage. So the formers on the fuselage page, I think are good to use. There's one little caveat to that. There is no F1, F1 right here. There's no F1 on the fuselage page. There's only this one that's on the template page and it's too big. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is kind of modify this one as I go, put all the other formers in place and then kind of put F1 up and just kind of adjust as necessary to get it to fit. So now I want to show you that. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut out the fuselage balsa and then the ply doubler piece. I have the fuselage ply doublers done. I'm using 3mm plywood and I have two pieces that have been tacked together. Now, before I take them apart, one of the things about this kit uh, I didn't see this when I'm reading the instructions that talks about it. There are these alignment holes. I think they're 1 16th or whatever. But what you do is you drill the holes and then you can use either uh, like push rod wires or whatever kind of wire that you have. And when you have both of the uh, doublers up, uh, you can put this wire through and then it helps you to align these fuselage formers here. I think it's kind of neat. I've never tried that way before. So I'm going to give it a shot. So what I need to do now is drill. I need to find the right size. I think I'll use a push rod um, and then drill the right size holes. And uh, then we can break apart these two plywood halves. A couple of pieces I need to make up real quick. This is your wing uh, mount plate. It's plans call for quarter inch birch plywood, which I could, I have some, I could use that, but birch plywood is really, really heavy. So what I'm going to do is laminate two pieces of 3mm which would be a little less than a quarter inch and I'm going to use carbon fiber in the middle very similar to what I did with the spar laminating the carbon fiber with the balsa but this will be with plywood and then this is the landing gear plate and I'm going to do the same thing uh, these pieces were on that plan, page three of the plan, but they're oversized, so I used F2 to draw out the shape. Same with uh, the bottom. I just used the bottom here. And then this slanted piece here is just one eighth inch. The plan calls for one eighth inch ply. I think they call it birch ply but I'm just gonna use 3mm light ply for this.
A couple of observations with this initial, just kind of seeing how this all works. The uh, push rods, I kind of like that idea. They, it's nice to get the former nice and square with the sides, the fuselage doubler. That's nice. The holes should be really, really quite snug to whatever it is that you use. I'm using the push rod. The holes should be really quite snug because it helps them here at the bottom with this angle when you bring in the doubler, the hole. See how it kind of popped out? Let's see if, I can... if it's a snug fit with that push rod, it helps to hold it in place. So that's kind of nice. It's going to be a little bit fiddly trying to glue this up. Oh, the other thing is I'm going to have to probably wet down the ply doubler, let it sit overnight like this and try to get the former to hold its shape. It'll make gluing up a lot easier. One more observation. I, I think if you could get some all threaded rod, small all threaded rod, that would actually work best because then you could screw on some nuts. This right here, these sides right here, this is the hardest part to bring together. You could use nuts to pull everything in nice and tight. I think that would be the way to go. Anyway, um, right now it's just kind of clamped up. I'm going to spray some water on the insides of the doublers and let it sit overnight. And I'm just using plain water for this. No ammonia. Yeah, let's let that sit overnight. Next morning, let's see how well this ply holds its shape. So it has held some of its curvature in there. It's still going to be a little bit, a little bit tough to actually get the glue, up, but I think it'll be all right. One more design consideration I need to think about before I start gluing up the fuselage is a hatch for the motor battery. I'll be using a 6S battery for this model. The, uh, the battery is going to sit on this floor right here. I'm going to extend the motor mount a little bit forward and to that I've added a little bit uh, to this floor, what they call the uh, forward fuel tank floor. So with that, I can stick the battery as far forward as about right about there. So that gives me an awful lot of room for a CG placement. But considering that the CG is here and there's a whole lot of airplane in the back, unless I've done a really good job with keeping the tail end light, the battery's probably going to go right about here. So I was looking at some photos of the real airplane on the internet and I found that there's really two types of canopy operation for this airplane. Either it opens to the right, a couple of uh, looks like regular door hinges, canopy opens to the right, or I've seen some where the canopy slides back. And that was really interesting. I kind of wanted to do that from the scale aspect of it and just kind of the neat factor. But if the battery is sitting way up here and entry is to here, that's not really a problem. The problem becomes holding this battery tray in place. I like to do simple battery trays, just a plywood piece, have it sit up underneath the lip that comes off the firewall, and on the back end just have a bolt that's tightened down finger tight. And that works really well. Simple and works. But if I were to come through the canopy, well, there's not really any good access to get to a bolt back here unless I have the bolt way back here. And that's an awful lot of battery tray. So as much as I like that idea, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I've also noticed on the real airplane, there's a panel right about here. 
and it goes between the back of the cowl and the forward section of the canopy. So that's what I've drawn in here. I've drawn in a couple of, there's two formers here, two formers here, and this right here will be the battery hatch. Should be plenty of room to sneak it in and then gain access for the bolt. Come to find out, I have a lot of room. I could actually place this battery sideways. I could have it way up here sideways if I wanted to. There's a whole lot of width in this fuselage. So I will need to create a couple of formers here. I think the way I'm gonna do it is just glue these formers in. I have to refine my F1 anyway. I'll add some blanks and then just use these uh, glued in formers as, as a template and sand down the formers I'll use for the battery hatch. Instead of trying to build directly on top of the plans, I'm gonna build on my glass table. I've already marked center lines for each of the formers. Now I'm just gonna draw a straight line on my table and use this as my reference for lining up the center line of the formers. See, I've got the one eighth inch spacers to account for the stringer that runs along the top here. So I have those in place. This right here may be a better depiction. I've raised the laser up. So now you can see the bottom of the laser as well, or the bottom of the former as well as the top. Yeah, I think this is gonna work. I wanted to use wood glue on this, but it's so fiddly trying to get this thing set up. You need about 10 hands. So I've got everything set the way I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and just use uh, some thin CA and then follow it up with some thick CA. First thing I'm gonna do is tack the formers to these plywood or balsa standoffs. These are sacrificial. I think I want to try to avoid getting glue on my balsa spacers. They just make it that much harder to remove them. I'm probably going to have a hard time getting these push rods out of these holes. I think they're going to be pretty well glued in. All right, now I'm going back in with thick CA. I liked the designer's idea of using the wire to help locate the formers. It worked well, and I would use it again. But if you use this method, do yourself a favor and add a little bit of wax to the wires. It will help greatly in removing them. In the next update, we continue building out the fuselage, which requires a little detective work to create former F1.